What's going on guys? Alright, so this video will be a bit different than the others. I'm starting a series of short tutorial videos. In this video, we'll be doing blown-in insulation in the attic using cellulose up to a level of R60 using a product called Thermashield from Home Depot and uh, using their rental machine as well. I'll run you through the steps of renting the machine, calculating how much insulation you need, what gear you need, and then we'll look at the actual process of blowing in. And at the end, since this is my first time, I'll give you the experience uh, that I had so you can make a decision when you go decide if you want to do this yourself. So, why did I choose this stuff over the pink fiberglass? First off, you get more R value per inch. That means you need less height in your attic of insulation to actually get the required R value. This stuff seems to uh, retain its R value better through a wide range of temperatures. So whether it's really cold or really hot, I read that the fiberglass is actually less effective and this stuff is more consistent. Again, the fact that it's denser than the fiberglass uh, lets less air through it and you don't want air flowing because that's where a lot of your heat is lost. This little density makes it better at filling uh, gaps and cracks so if you have little crevices in your attic and you have to reach this stuff is better at filling those rather than kind of staying puffed up and not filling the cracks like fiberglass. And again the fact that it's denser means that the this has better acoustic performance so if that's something that uh, you're into or you want to block out those loud neighbors you're going to get a little bit more uh, value out of this stuff. Another thing that was super important to us was uh, choosing environmentally friendly products for this build and essentially uh, cellulose is just recycled paper so it doesn't get much more environmentally friendly than that. Like I said it's just paper. It's been treated with uh, fire retardant which gives it a good fire resistance and essentially the same treatment makes it bug uh, and insect uh, resistant. And again, going back to the fact that it's paper means that this stuff isn't itchy so it might be a bit easier to work with. And one thing that's probably one of the main considerations is the fact that this was much cheaper than fiberglass. I did the calculations for about 800 square feet and uh, this cost me about $800 Canadian at Home Depot and fiberglass was about uh, $1,300, so price is definitely something you want to consider. Alright, so now you've decided to go with cellulose and you have to buy the materials. We bought them at Home Depot and they include the uh, rental machine for free. I don't know if that's a company-wide policy, but it is at our lo local store. So I ended up buying 75 bags. Essentially, you calculate the area of your house. So if you take a look here at the uh, second floor plan, we can kind of guess the attic above. We're at around 800 or so square feet. So if we look at the uh, chart provided by uh, Thermal Shield, you can see here that 800 square feet is covered by 67 25 pound bags. Each one of those bags covers about 12 square feet. So if you want to do the math yourself, if not, you can look at their trusty little cheat sheet on their website and you can figure out exactly how many bags you need. I actually ended up buying 72 and then uh, when we got to the very end of the process, uh, we ran out of a few bags so I just drove back to Home Depot and bought another five bags. You're better off buying a few more and returning them if you don't need them. Uh, worst comes to worst, you have a bit more insulation in your attic and that's never a bad thing. Once you've got that ordered, take your receipt and head over to the tool rental uh, department and tell them you need the cellulose machine. The downside of this machine is it's much heavier than the uh, kind of plastic Atticat machine. You need a, a large truck or a trailer in order to uh, get it to your house and you'll probably need someone else to help you unload it because it is extremely heavy. We managed to fit it in the back of my brother's forerunner but uh, in the process, some fingers got crushed, so... Sorry, Nick. Keep in mind, the machine is very heavy, and uh, be careful while unloading it. Alright, so I did all the prep work last night. Everything's uh, ready to shoot. 
You'll have to install these rulers so you know exactly which depth your insulation is at as you're blowing. I installed a few of these throughout uh, the attic at kind of various key spots. Another important thing is to actually make sure that you have somewhere to actually walk while you're doing this. It's going to be a bit confusing so try not to step through the vapor barrier or on the strapping and uh, you know you don't want to find yourself on the second floor with a broken ankle. As you can see I had pre-installed all these cardboard baffles. Essentially these are just uh, pieces of cardboard that I bought that you staple underneath uh, the stud cavity. That goes down to uh, the ventilation over here and essentially that'll prevent cellulose from going onto your uh, soffit so your attic can breathe and uh, that'll increase the lifespan of the materials on your roof. You're gonna need some help so choose your partner. Here's the gear you're going to need. First of all equip some coveralls, a respirator, you're gonna want safety goggles, work gloves, and finally, you can't forget that orange Hugo Bills toque. I'm not going to tell you exactly how to use the machine, you should probably talk to a guy at the Home Depot, but essentially there's a blower motor that you turn on and that is, uh, it just shoots out air and will blow the insulation all the way to the attic. Once you're up there, it's pretty much a point and shoot operation. Essentially, you're going to want to start from the furthest point from your attic hatch and then work your way back. Just make sure to keep an eye on your rulers so you get the right depth because it's harder to go back once you've actually started moving towards the back of the attic. So as a loader, my job is to keep feeding chunks to the machine um, without clogging it so without it being too full so it's a bit of a balance of timing. Essentially all you have to do is cut a block in half with a knife like this. You just cut it in half, it's really easy. So you make your way over to the machine and essentially once it's turned on you would feed chunks like this slowly and you want the machine I guess to function properly. I'm not an expert but it's been functioning about a quarter to empty I guess to keep the airflow and you just keep doing that over and over again. All right, now, so what we've learned. The process was actually very smooth. Uh, with two people, you can absolutely do this yourself. Early on in the morning, uh, while we were setting up the machine, we couldn't actually get it to shoot because the machine was clogging up. I think it, we actually just got the hose uh, from the Home Depot uh, clogged. However, we took a shop vac, sucked it all up. It took us about half an hour and created a bit of a mess, but uh, we got that all cleared up and essentially the machine worked fine and leave the machine on the proper settings that are set by the attendant at the Home Depot. I, I would recommend to not screw around with it too much. I think this is a great way to add extra insulation to your attic or to insulate a new home. Essentially you just need a really good partner that's good with the timing and you could uh, you know do the whole thing. We shot the whole thing in about four hours. 
Also, remember that the machine rentals are uh, always busy on the weekends because people tend to be weekend warriors, probably like yourself, and show up on Saturday morning to get the machine. So we actually went on Friday evening and uh, got it for 24 hours. And essentially that gave us until uh, kind of later that day to bring back the machine. So that might be a helpful tip to uh, guarantee you have the machine is to go on Friday night and just pay for a little bit more if you need to. If you found this video helpful, hit the subscribe button and leave us a thumbs up and uh, feel free to leave any comments. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to get back to you. And if you enjoyed this video, you can take a look at the rest of our uh, house build vlog where we follow the construction of this whole house. So stay tuned. See you next time.